Brooke Russell Astor was not, in fact, the last Mrs. Astor. Just as four generations of Astor women bearing that name preceded her, at least two generations of Astor wives will survive her. Still, she promises to be the last Mrs. Astor to claim an exclusive right to the title. Only one of her predecessors, Carolyn Scammerhorn Astor, managed to pull off such a feat. In their prime, both women loom large in the imaginations of their fellow New Yorkers. Both recognized that New York City was a city that thrived on self-invention, a city where the cut of your suit could count for more than the place you came from. In the late 19th century, a meatpacking baron could get off the train in Hoboken and move into a Fifth Avenue chateau and immediately be treated as someone to reckon with. One hundred years later, the chateau has given way to a luxury apartment, but not much else has changed. Great wealth made possible the power enjoyed by the two Mrs. Astors. A family name long associated with the city also played a part. But without the money or the name, the two Mrs. Astors would have made an impression. Both lived through times of great economic instability. Both viewed New York as a city under siege and were able to get other New Yorkers to see things the way they did. Both believed that by setting an example, they had the power to make things right again. Both made their mark without Astor husbands by their sides and lived long enough to see their names count for more than their husbands ever had. Yet no two women could have been less alike.